Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. Just after 5 p.m., Vancouver, Canada. 26-year-old Jamie Coots is heading home after a quick trip to the drugstore. I'm walking directly downtown, probably the nicest part of Vancouver. About halfway home, I could feel somebody walking really close behind me when I was looking at my phone. I can kind of feel that they're just stopped there. Jamie feels uneasy, so she looks behind her to try and get a better look at the person. He's maybe 155 pounds. He's a small guy. I would say 5'7", five, 5'8", a five, little bit darker skin, darker hair, dark eyes. Besides his eyes, Jamie can't see the man's face. It's completely hidden by his sweatshirt hood and mask. This is very typical of someone who has ill intent. They want to be incognito so that all of their really poignant features aren't highlighted, especially their face. I put my phone away and looked up and said, um, you're walking too close to me. And the man, he didn't say anything to me. So I was like, OK, that's weird. The stranger is clearly following Jamie. But why? It's possible that this stalker was trying to figure out where she lives, where she works, who she was meeting up with, trying to gain as much information about her as possible. And I think he was waiting for a reaction from me to try calling 911, to running, to screaming. If Jamie calls 911, will the man hear and get angry? Instead, she decides to turn on her phone's camera. My only thought was, you can't go home. And so that's why my body told me to record what's happening. I truly thought that that would kind of defear him a little bit. I could call the police, but that couple of seconds in between stopping the recording and trying to make the phone call, he could have approached me. And then that would be the access point to come grab me. When you're in a situation like this, you're thinking, I'm either going to survive or I'm not. And so she's thinking, what can I use? What are my weapons? For someone who's a civilian who doesn't carry around weapons, your phone can be quite powerful because of that camera. So this was really quick thinking on her part. So at least she has this guy on film. Something happens to her. I took my phone and I held it like this, up as high as I could so him and everybody else could see that I was recording. That way I could have a plain view of, of what's in front of me and how far he is behind me. But whoever this man is and whatever he wants, the camera doesn't stop him. He did not care at all. He looked the camera straight. He was not scared of being filmed. He has no intention of giving up. He's walking at an extremely quick pace and you can see him kind of double step. I walked through a red light at one point, um, just as the light's changing, and he keep up with me. I'm definitely scared. It's the first nice day, but I'm still in a big winter jacket, and I'm walking on the verge of running, so I'm covered in sweat. My t-shirt was soaking wet. Um, you can see him in multiple parts of the video wiping his face like this, trying to keep up with me. I continue to walk and what should have been a 10 minute walk quickly turned into about 30 minutes. There's absolutely no other space to wonder what's going to happen next because I'm absolutely consumed with what my next move is gonna be. I'm shaking, my adrenaline's definitely at its peak. Jamie needs to outrun or outwit the man who is following her as fast as she can. My worst fear is sex trafficking or abduction. In Vancouver, we do have a big sex trafficking issue. We are one of the main ports, and there's been a huge amount of women going missing in the area. All I wanted more than anything was to go home, but I didn't want him to know anywhere close to where I lived. I decide that it's in my best interest to one, continue reporting, and two, get somewhere that's highly populated. That's when I, it popped into my head, you know what, I'm gonna go to the skate park. There's a lot of people there. And if this man decided to do anything, there would be so much eyes. I went right to the absolute center of the skate park, thinking that he wasn't gonna follow me in, and he continued to follow. 
Nothing is stopping this man, and Jamie is panicked. I'm just trying to look for the biggest group of people and hope to get help. Hey, do you mind if I, guys, if I sit with you guys? This guy's literally been following me in circles yeah, that's cool. for like 40 minutes, and I've been recording it. Yeah, and he's cool. literally just standing behind me, and I don't know his issue. Yeah, that's cool. Why you just pull up a seat? But even when Jamie sits down, the stalker doesn't go away. In the video, you can see he's either holding something or he's got fists in his, in his jacket pockets because his hands are in there and he's trying to pull his fists out but having kind of a hard time. Does this man have a weapon? What does he want? He's probably sizing up the situation to see if he could ultimately take her or attack her. This is terrifying. Had she not gone to a group of people, maybe we would not have seen her again. The man lingers for a few minutes, but as more and more skaters turn to watch him, he finally leaves. You can see him start to walk away, and then one of the girls who was skateboarding there tried to approach him, but he continued to walk away. Now, all Jamie wants to do is get home, but she's paralyzed with fear. I saw the direction that he walked off in, and when I was ready, I made the mission home, but I had eyes <laughs> all around me the entire time. I called the police and I let them know what happened. I give them a description of the man and screenshot a couple images from the video I had taken. Later that evening, I decided it's probably kind of important if I post this to social media. My initial thought was if I post this, maybe somebody would be like, oh, I've seen that guy. To Jamie's shock, she isn't the only one who's had interactions with this stalker. I had a huge amount of people come forward saying that they've had similar situations in the past. And then about four women say that they were stalked very recently by somebody who appeared to look like the same man. This is very disturbing because when someone is a serial stalker, that means that they're thinking about what they're going to do to their victims. And that means that it doesn't stop at one person. One of the women, Nani Gonzalez, is actually from within Jamie's own circle of friends. 10 seconds into the video, I was just like, oh my God, this was the same person that had recently followed me. Fortunately, Gonzalez says she was able to avoid the man and lost him before she reached her home. By the next morning, I had hundreds of messages um, asking me to go public. Social media sleuths are eager to help Jamie figure out who the man is. People wanted to figure out exactly who he was, messaging me all kinds of crazy things, things that I didn't even notice to look out for. Hey, um, did you notice there was a car with the back window on gold? They also point out something Jamie never saw. It looks like the stalker had something in his hand. He was grabbing something from his pocket and putting it into his satchel, which looked like a switchblade or maybe a box cutter and you see him at one point get caught off guard by another girl that he keeps kind of looking back at. And um, I was told by many people that she kind of had a similar look to me. And so I wonder if there's a specific type of woman that maybe he tries to go for. It wasn't until I had posted it to social media that I realized, okay, my intuition was right on knowing that this man, he's done it before, he's gonna do it again. Just a few days after Jamie posts her video, the Vancouver police apprehend a suspect who they believe is connected to the disturbing stalking incidents. He is charged with criminal harassment for Jamie's incident. We're very pleased that we were able to um, arrest uh, the right person in this case. Social media is amazing these days. You can put something on there and really reach a lot of people. The ordeal has left Jamie shaken and constantly on alert. I think about it all the time. You really don't expect what happened to happen in broad daylight. I think that your gut is the most important thing in the whole world. From my experience, I've learned that if something doesn't feel right, to trust it. And she hopes talking about her experience. Also trying to process what had just happened. Yeah. Will help honor those who weren't as fortunate as she was. I was super lucky. There's a lot of women going missing. 
I don't want those people to be forgotten. And so I use this as an opportunity to speak out for them.